Imagine waking in the dead of night, your body frozen, unable to move, speak, or scream. The darkness presses in from all sides, heavy and suffocating. Then, out of the corner of your eye, you see him, the hat man. Taller than any human should be, his silhouette looms in the shadows, the wide brim of his hat casting a deeper darkness over his face. No features are visible, just an oppressive void where eyes should be, boring into your soul with a malevolence that chills your blood. He doesn't move, yet his presence creeps closer, an overwhelming force of dread. You try to wake, to shake yourself free from the nightmare, but it's not a dream. He's real, and he's watching you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wicked Encounters, where we explore just what goes bump in the night. I'm your host, Allie, and today we're going to talk about the terrifying demon that has been encountered all around the world. The Hat Man. Since the 2000s, reports of the Hat Man have made their way onto social media. Not surprising. After all, many people like to overshare what's going on in their lives. But what makes the Hat Man unique is his description, almost never seeming to change despite the different cultures he pops up in. There are some changes, of course. One person may report that he stands at six feet tall, while other times he appears ten feet tall. At times, he is said to possess bright, glowing red eyes, and other times they are pools of deep darkness. All accounts of him, though, say that he wears a trench coat and a very noticeable hat. He doesn't try to attack you or even touch you. He doesn't even sit on your chest like some sleep paralysis demons do. He just stands there, quietly. Uh, he's just standing there, menacingly! observing you in your most vulnerable moment when you're suffering from sleep paralysis. Now, what is sleep paralysis? You've probably heard of it before, but just in case, sleep paralysis is a temporary inability to move or speak while falling asleep or waking up. Your brain is active and you are conscious, but your body is still in sleep mode. It's actually a perfectly normal part of the REM sleep, but is considered a disorder when it occurs outside of this REM sleep. The reason for this paralysis is to keep the body from moving around and falling out of your bed, or reenacting your dreams while you sleep and potentially hurting yourself or someone else. When you're no longer in REM sleep, it can be scary because you... I mean, well, you can't move. It can also be joined by incredibly vivid hallucinations that are attributed to being parts of dreams. These episodes can last from a few seconds to one to two minutes, which can provoke a panic response in the body. While sleep paralysis can occur in anyone, including completely normal sleepers, it is linked to certain conditions, such as increased stress, excessive alcohol consumption, sleep deprivation, and narcolepsy. The earliest clinical account of sleep paralysis dates back to 1664, when Dutch physician Isbrand von Dimer Broek described it as the devil laying upon her and holding her down. He said this when talking about a patient of his, who was a 50-year-old woman who seemed to deal with sleep paralysis on a nightly basis. From his accounts, sleep experts were able to determine that his patient was suffering from sleep paralysis with hypnagogic experiences. Hypnagogic hallucinations are hallucinations, be they audio, visual, tactile, or any other sensory event that happens when a person is falling asleep, while hypnopompic are ones that happen when you're waking up. Sleep paralysis has baffled scientists for centuries, causing its occurrence to be associated with black magic, curses, monsters, demons, you know, the usual stuff that we attribute all of our problems to. The Hat Man is believed to be a form of shadow people. Shadow people trace back to many different legends, religious beliefs, and folklore, with claims of them being ghosts, demons, or some other otherworldly horror. 
They're the being you see out of the corner of your eye or the sensation of feeling someone staring at you from the corner of the room. With their forms varying from a solid shape made out of darkness to swirling dark smoke. There are many theories as to what they can be, with ideas ranging to them now being time travelers, ghosts, beings from an interdimensional plane, or aliens. While often described as ghostly entities, shadow people seem to behave entirely different to other spiritual phenomena that we make note of. Son of a bitch! Orbs, ectoplasm, and other ghostly elements don't really follow them around like they do with other spiritual entities. But shadow people are often witnessed with ghostly phenomena. That might sound confusing. Um, let me put it this way. So, say you wake up and you see a shadow person. Oh no, so scary. Now, just because you see a shadow person, that doesn't mean you're going to see orbs or poltergeist activity. But if you have poltergeist activity orbs, and you're maybe even seeing a spiritual entity, you may also see shadow people too. They seem to act alone rather than in clusters of activity, but don't mind popping in to scare the crap out of you if you're already going through it. Went under the bed. Because of this, the ghost theory is a less supported theory overall, just because they act so differently. But for those who do support it, it's believed that shadow people could be souls that are lost. People who haven't accepted their state of being. And for that, they don't look the same as other spirits with facial features and details. Though these lack of details are also what makes them all the more unnerving, and why many believe them to actually be demons. When someone comes across a shadow person, they often experience dark thoughts. The kind that YouTube won't let me share or even say out loud because YouTube is YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. Encounters also come with feelings of intense dread. Combined with the intrusive thoughts, these are often sensations associated with demonic entities. Their glowing red eyes that they're sometimes said to have doesn't exactly help that demonic vibe go away either. And witnesses often claim that when they saw a shadow person, they didn't have the feeling that they were witnessing something that was once human, but something much darker altogether. Finally, there's the belief that they are interdimensional beings. This belief is probably the current most popular one, especially after Miami's whole mall incident at the beginning of the year. This belief falls in line with the one that believes they could be aliens, since there's the theory that aliens are more than likely interdimensional beings themselves. Shadow people could be the slip between dimensions that happens when one of these beings comes through to our own dimension. The hat man is simply one of the travelers that enjoys coming through the most well-dressed. Now say the hat man isn't a ghost, a demon, or an interdimensional being slash alien. What could it be? Well, it could be your brain having a hard time understanding self. According to a new study, when a specific region of the brain called the left temporoparietal junction, TPJ, is stimulated, it can create the illusion of a shadow person. The hat man and shadow people are often experienced among those that have disorders such as schizophrenia and paranoia. The findings were actually discovered by accident from neurologist Olaf Blank of the Brain Mind Institute in Lausanne, Switzerland. Blank and his colleagues were trying to find the source for a 23-year-old woman's epileptic seizures, where they discovered that when they applied a mild current through surgically implanted electrodes to various regions of her brain, not much happened until they stimulated her left TPJ, located roughly above the left ear. Suddenly, she reported feeling the presence of a mystery person behind her, a motionless and speechless shadow that imitated her body posture and actions. This being would lay behind her when she laid down, sat behind her when she sat down, and attempted to take a test card from her when she tried to participate in a language exercise. No, 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 no. Blank explained how the phenomena is similar to what schizophrenics experience when they have difficulty recognizing that their body is their own. They also have feelings of being followed and being watched. For Blank, the shadow person phenomena could shed light on how our brains perceive our self. The TPJ is known to put some of these cues together. When this function is disrupted, 
the brain perceives two bodies instead of one, and mistakes the second for that of being a stranger, a shadow person, or the hat man. The idea of the hat man and his ilk being neurological errors, uh, maybe blips? Well, the idea of them all being in someone's mind and coming forward when something isn't quite right up there can also be backed up with the fact that most people who see them do suffer from sleep deprivation. In fact, many meth addicts report seeing shadow people after long periods of sleep deprivation, with psychiatrist Jack Potts believing that meth usage adds a conspiratorial component to the sleep deprivation hallucination. Basically, now you're sleep deprived, imagining things, and you're paranoid. It's a wonderful combination. I don't know why more people don't use meth. Stop it. Get some help. Shadow people are also reported from those under the effects of delirience, a subclass of hallucinogens, which can build up if you abuse acetaminophen, ibuprofen, or medicines similar to them. You don't even really need to abuse them per se. I mean, you might just see a shadow person by simply having them in your system. After all, anything is possible. But what do you think? Have you ever seen the hat man? What about a shadow person in general? Do you know anyone who might have seen them that has trouble sleeping? Let me know in the comments. I love seeing your guys' thoughts and opinions, and really need to work on getting back to everyone who's left a comment. I do read them all. My social battery has just been a bit eh, lacking. If you like learning about the unknown wonders and spooky weirdos of the world, why not like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification so you know when I post. To that note, thank you to everyone for watching this video. You guys are seriously amazing and I am so very thankful for you. Also, a huge thank you to my good buddies over on Patreon, especially our VIP camper. Well, until next time, I'm Allie, this is Wicked Encounters, and I'll see you next time. Bye!